Bring your friends and your folks along Down to the river and sing this song My name is Jessie Eckrode and I'm the Outreach Program Coordinator at Carpenter St. Croix Valley Nature Center. At CNC, we've been proud to partner with Riverfest since the inception of the event. And although Riverfest programming is going to look a little bit different this year, we're glad for the opportunity to continue to collaborate with the community of Hudson. As many of you are aware, Carpenter Nature Center will not be doing in-person programming this year for Riverfest due to health concerns related to COVID-19. That being said, we hope you enjoy this series of animal meet and greet videos featuring the ambassadors from Carpenter Nature Center. Turtles are part of the reptile group of animals, and like all other reptiles, turtles have scaly skin. What sets them apart from other reptiles, though, is that they have a protective shell. The shell consists of two parts, the top half, known as the carapace, and the bottom half, known as the plastron. The individual sections of a turtle's shell are called scutes, which are actually thick, modified scales which are fused together to form the shell. There are nine species of turtles native to the St. Croix River Valley, including our featured ambassadors, the Blandings turtle and wood turtle. The Blandings turtle is one of our region's most recognizable turtles due to its bright yellow chin and dark smiling mustache. It reaches six to 10 inches in length and has a unique high domed carapace with scattered yellow flecks. The plastron is hinged across the front third, which allows the turtle to close its shell when threatened. A wood turtle's brownish shell can reach five and a half to eight inches in length. Its plastron is yellow with blotched black marks along its edge, and the skin on its face, neck, and limbs can range from yellowish to reddish orange. The wood turtle gets its name from its shell, which resembles engraved wood. Blinding's turtles live in marshes, swamps, bogs, ponds, quiet streams, and shallow bays. They are semi-aquatic and need access to both wetlands and upland habitat for laying eggs. Wetlands with mud bottoms and aquatic vegetation are preferred as the turtles overwinter in muddy bottoms of deeper wetlands. Wood turtles live near streams, creeks, and rivers. In the western portion of their range, wood turtles are more aquatic, while in the eastern range, they are more terrestrial. The turtles prefer heavily vegetated banks and sandy stream bottoms. However, they can be found in woodlands and grasslands, but are usually no further than a quarter mile away from water. Blinding's turtles are predominantly found in the Great Lakes region of Canada and the United States, although they are threatened and endangered through much of their range. The backwaters of the Mississippi River in Minnesota support one of the largest populations of Blinding's turtles. Wood turtles occupy a similar range, although their eastern range is more consistent than that of the Blanding's turtle. Turtles, like other reptiles, develop through a simple life cycle. This means that turtle young look like adults, only smaller. They do not go through a larval stage like insects and amphibians. Like other reptiles, turtles lay leathery eggs in nests on land, and young are self-sufficient from the moment they hatch. Blinding turtles and wood turtles do not reach sexual maturity until they are between 14 and 20 years of age. Breeding and egg laying occur in early spring, and both species produce clutches of approximately 5 to 20 eggs. The incubation period of the nest determines whether the developing turtles will be males or females. If they live in a safe, clean habitat with abundant food, both blandings and wood turtles can be very long-lived species. Wood turtles can live to be approximately 50 years old, and Blanding's turtles can live to be between 60 and 100 years old. Blanding's turtles are primarily carnivorous and will eat crayfish, snails, insects, frogs, fish, earthworms, slugs, as well as some aquatic vegetation, 
grasses, and berries. Wood turtles are omnivorous and will eat leaves, flowers, fruits, worms, insects, and even carrion. They forage on land or in the water, but are slow feeders and are not good at catching fast prey. This species is known to thump the ground with its feet to simulate rain. This brings worms to the surface, which the turtles then eat. While the anatomy of all turtles is similar, individual species have adaptational variations based on their habitat. These adaptations can be visualized as a spectrum, with distinctly aquatic turtles on one end of the spectrum, tortoises, which are terrestrial specialists on the other end, and many other species of turtles in between. In general, turtles that spend more time in the water tend to have smooth shells, webbing between their toes, and when they move on land, they drag their shells. By contrast, turtles that spend more time on land tend to have textured shells, no or less webbing in between their toes, and their legs are strong enough to lift their shells while they walk. Both Blandings and Wood Turtles are listed as being threatened species in Minnesota and Wisconsin as a result of human activities such as industrial and residential development, agriculture, and transportation. One of the main issues facing Blandings Turtles is habitat fragmentation. Habitat fragmentation occurs when large, continuous tracts of suitable land are split into smaller pieces that become isolated from one another. Blanding's turtles are most affected by habitat fragmentation with regard to breeding. When the wetland habitat where they live becomes separated from sandy upland habitat they need for breeding, they often end up laying their eggs in dangerous locations, such as gravel pits and construction sites, resulting in high mortality of juvenile turtles. The primary threat to wood turtles are human activities that destroy or damage riparian forest habitat, such as intensive deforestation for development. Roads are dangerous for both species of turtles, especially when they are migrating to breed and lay eggs in spring. All of these factors, combined with the fact that these turtles need to survive for decades before they can breed, makes them vulnerable to population instability. Although numbers of blandings and wood turtles are on decline, there are several actions you can take to help stabilize and increase their population. Report any blandings and wood turtles you find to your local DNR office, help protect their natural habitats, drive cautiously to avoid hitting traveling turtles, and last but not least, share what you have learned about these turtles with others. Carpenter Nature Center's Blandings Turtle was adopted by the Nature Center in 1996. He had been a pet, but his owner was moving out of state and didn't want to transport a species of special concern across state lines. The age of our Blandings Turtle is unknown. Carpenter Nature Center's Wood Turtle was part of a breeding program in Nebraska. He was hatched in 2004 and adopted by the Carpenter Nature Center education team. Carpenter Nature Center's turtles are wonderful ambassadors, teaching thousands of visitors every year about our natural environment and the diversity of wildlife found in our region. Now bring your friends and your folks along down to the river and sing this song. River Fest, it's the 